All right. So uh, we will review the Ashto. Ashto pavement design guide. or Ashto Pavement Design Method. Um, so if you remember last session, we started working on the, the big equation that we used for the, the pavement design, for the flexible pavement design. And we started to see what types of parameters we need for that equation to, to find the SN or structural number, right? So we are looking for SN or structural number. And we need a, a bunch of other uh, parameters to calculate the structural number. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what we do with the structural number. But before that, uh, just a quick uh, review of last session. We also talked about the W18, that's the total um, uh, traffic. But uh, if you remember, we mentioned that since we have a combination of different types of vehicles in the traffic, we need to convert uh, all the traffic load into uh, a unique, uh, axle type and axle load so that we can add them up and have a consistent unit for all the traffic loads. So th that's why the axle type that we use is single axle and the axle load is an 18 kips uh, single axle load. So single axle uh, equivalent load. Equivalent load. That's the W18. And sometimes you refer to that as E cell or equivalent single axle load, right? So this will be equivalent single axle load. And then we had the S naught, which was the overall standard deviation, the overall standard deviation. Uh, and, and this is mostly for the the traffic, some deviation of the traffic. We also have, um, we need to consider the uh, confidence and reliability in our, into our model. So this is the reliability level. Reliability, uh, which is actually the Z statistic. Um, the standard normal curve. And then we talked about the uh, Delta PSI or present serviceability index or which is the initial PSI
minus TSI, which is the terminal serviceability index. So this was uh, initial pavement serviceability index and TSI was terminal serviceability index. Terminal serviceability index. And then we also talked about having uh, MR, which is the resilient modulus of the subgrade layer of the subgrade sort. So resilient modulus of the subgrade soil. And this is in uh, PSI, right? And we also had a, uh, an example that we showed how we uh, actually convert the traffic load uh, for different types of and combination of the traffic. And uh, the, since we're talking about the MR here, um, if you don't have the MR from the uh, resilient modulus test in the laboratory, so this is coming from laboratory test. If you don't have the laboratory test, uh, you have the option, there's another option to calculate it from this, uh, this is the direct method, right? So directly you can calculate MR from the lab test. If you don't have access to the lab test, you can actually calculate MR from CBR. And if you remember CBR was California bearing ratio. California <clears throat> bearing ratio. So this is the indirect method. Right? So if you don't have access to the direct method, to the direct laboratory test, uh, you will be able to use the indirect method. And um, Again, if you uh, recall from last session, we had a long equation um, with log of W18 on the left side, right? So the equation, uh, I'm not gonna write the, the whole equation again, but uh, the equation was log 10 of W18 was a bunch of parameters on the, the right side, right? And then in um, some of these parameters here, we had SN, in two of these we had SN, right? Um, and uh, the problem with this equation is that you want to, the unknown is actually SN and we're looking for a structure number, but you have, uh, this equation is not a traditional Mathematic, mathematical equation and you cannot directly solve it. So you should either use the try and error method or you should use a, a solver uh, like Excel solver or MATLAB to, to solve this equation. Okay, now what's the next step once we solve and find the SN? So, sorry. Okay, so once we find out DSN, so from here we have, we can find SN, right? Once we find SN, we need to use SN. So the next step is to estimate uh, layer thicknesses, layer 
thicknesses from Sn. And uh, this is important because this is always a question on both FE and uh, PE exams. Uh, and they, they're, they're mostly using the Ashton method. And most of the cities and counties uh, are still using the Ashton method uh, for their pavement design. Okay, so once you find out SN, SN is correlated to different layers with this equation. A1 times D1 plus A2, D2, M2 plus A3, D3, M3. So what are these? A1, A2, and A3. These are called structural layer coefficients, structural layer coefficients. for surface layer, uh, base and sub-base. And sub-base. And then uh, D1, D2, and D3 are actually the thicknesses of, so layer thicknesses, layer thickness for the same three layers, for surface layer, base and sub-base. Okay. All right, um, so, and there's also, oh, and, and, and we have M2 and M3, M2 and M3, and these are called uh, drainage coefficients. So drainage coefficients. And this is only for base and sub-base. don't have any drainage coefficient for the surface layer because we are assuming only base and sub base are drain are designed for um, drainage okay so the way it works is that you have let's say a three layer pavement system This is uh, the sub base, this is the base, and this is the surface layer. So uh, the way it works is you, you work from the top to the bottom. Uh, you have SN1, SN2, and SN3. And SN1 is only A1, D1. SN2 is A1, D1 plus A2, D2, M2. And SN3 is all of them. A1, D1 plus A2, D2, M2 plus A3, D3, M3. And then you should be able to find D1, D2, and D3. So I'm gonna show you how to actually solve this, uh, this problem with an example. And that example shows a lot of, or answers a lot of your questions about um, finding yes and 
and also how to calculate the thickness layers, uh, the layer thicknesses. Okay, so going back to the equation one more time here, this is the equation we talked about, right? Um, there are two ways to solve this equation. Again, using your calculator solver or Excel solver, or using a traditional graph. Um, let me pause here one more, one second, then I show you the graph to see how it works. Okay, let me pause for a second. All right, okay, so here's the, the graph that you can use instead of solving the equation, you can use this graph to uh, find the value of this. And let me make this a little bit bigger so that you can see, okay. All right, so let's see how do we use this graph. Um, there's an example on this one. So let's start from the beginning. Um, you start always from the left side of the graph. So you start here. So we start here and what we do is, let's say you have, let's uh, look at the, the, the darker uh, arrows on the, on the picture. Um, let's say we have the, the reliability level uh, is 99%, right? So this is where we are looking for, 99%. And then our overall standard deviation is 0.5. It's actually here, 0.5. So this is the standard deviation. Uh, what you do is you connect these two with a straight line and continue your straight line until you reach the first transition line, the TL. Uh, so this is where you hit the, the first transition line after reading the reliability level and standard deviation, right? And then the next step is assuming that you've already calculated your W18 or equivalent thing like load or ESO. Let's say you have, in this case, you have, let's see, these are in million ESOs, right? Let's say you have 2 million ESOs. So this is actually the, the 2, this is 1, 1 1.5 and 2. So you have 2 million ESOs. Again, you do the same, you connect the first, um, you continue from the previous transition line right here, and then connect it with a straight line to your ESO, which is right here. And then you continue until you reach your second transition line, uh, which is here, right? And then from there, the only remaining parameter is MR or resilient modulus of the subgrade. Let's say in this case, in terms of PSI, it's 9,000 PSI. This is in 1,000 PSI. So it's 9,000 PSI. Um, this is your second point, so you start from this, uh, the second transition line connected with a straight line to the MR, and then you continue until you reach the, the Y axis on the, on the graph. And uh, from now, from here, the only other parameter you need is your Delta PSI. So these um, dark line or dark curves are Delta PSI. So let's say in this case, your Delta PSI is two, which is, this is two, 
and this is two right here. So from at this point, what you do instead of connecting, you just connect these two with this horizontal line, or you just continue from the previous um, point that you hit the y-axis, continue horizontally until you hit the delta PSI curve that represents your delta PSI, which is in case, this case is two. And then from there, you go down and you read uh, the number on the y-axis. And in this case, it's 4.4, right? So that would be your SN. SN is gonna be 4.4. I hope that was clear. And again, this is just an approximate uh, alternative. Instead of solving the, the long SN equation, you can uh, just simply plug in your numbers here and um, solve the, um, the equation for finding SN. Okay, so let's do another example here on the screen. Let's see if you should be able to, to, to do the example remotely. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave this on the screen. And then Let's solve the SN for the following for the following parameters. So example. Let's say your initial PSI is 4.2, your TSI is 2.5, the resilient modulus is 15,000 PSI, and then the, the confidence level is 95%. So R is 95%. And standard deviation is 0.2. Or it's actually, let's say 0 0.4. 0 0.4. And your W18 is 9 million E cells. Now the question is, what is SN? Okay. So for the practice problem we have, a flexible pavement to be designed to last 10 years. So uh, flexible pavement, uh, life, expected life is 10 years. Uh, the initial PSI So the initial PSI is 4.2. The TSI is 2.5. Uh, the resilient modulus of the subgrade is 14,000 PSI. Actually, let's make it 15. 15,000 PSI. 
the reliability level is 95% and overall standard deviation is 0.4. And then uh, for the design, the, the, the combination of the traffic is something similar to this. Okay, see how many we have, three. All right, so we have cars, pickups, and light vans. So we have cars, pickups, and vans. Uh, the axle configuration is we have two, 2,000 pounds or two kips single axle. And then we have 30,000 of these. This is actually a ADT. ADT is average annual daily traffic. So we have 30,000 30, per day of the light vehicles. And then we have single unit trucks. We have two types of axle, eight, thousand pounds or eight kips uh, single axle steering or steering single axle And then we have 20,000 pounds or 20 kips drive the, the rear axle. And that's also a single axle. And then the combination or the count, the daily count, we have 1,000 pass, passes of these ones uh, per day. And then the last one is we have semi trailers, tractor, semi trailer truck. So, tractor, semi trailer truck. We have three types of axles here. Um, we have 10,000 pounds. of the steering single axle we have 16000 pounds of the drive the middle axle which is tandem this is actually similar to the example that we had last session and then we have 44,000 pounds 
the trader, which is a triple axle. And the count of this one is we have only 350 uh, per day of this type of vehicle. And then the other information you need for uh, once you calculate the SN, we need to know that MN, M2 and M3, the drainage coefficients for both base and sub-base layers are one. And then D1, the HMA, hot mix asphalt, surface layer, the, the thickness of the surface layer is four inches. And we have uh, 10 inches of D2 is crushed stone. Or actually D2, we are looking for D2 and D3 is crushed stone sub base and then we have 10 inches of sub base layer we are looking for the thickness of the base layer with the assumption that uh, the base layer is is soil cement All right. So let's, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post this problem on Canvas. And uh, also I'm going to um, provide the, the tables that you need to To, to solve the problem. And then you should be able to, to follow the steps, the Ashto uh, design steps to, 